Hi, I'm John. I'm a software engineer at Headstarter, and this is V0 by Vercel, and this is the V0 clone you're going to build during the Headstarter Accelerator. Now, just like the real V0, you can chat with it and ask questions. For example, let's ask it about Next.js. You can also ask it follow-up questions. So let's ask it, for example, about Remix. And now we know that's not special. If you're accepted into the Headstarter Accelerator, you can probably build a simple LLM chat in your sleep. Uh, the real power of V0 is that you can ask it to generate UI components using React and ShadCN UI. Let's see this in action by asking it to generate a login page. And when you do that, it will start generating code, and you'll be able to see not only the code that it's generating, but also a live preview of what that looks like when it's rendered as a React component. Of course, you can view your past conversations, you can rename them, and you can even make your conversations public and copy a link so you can share them with others. Now, one of the best features in Vercel's implementation is you can actually run a command in your terminal to take that generated component and add it into your own code base. So to try this out, let's click this add to code base button here, copy the command, and then I'll head over to this new Next.js project that I've created. Now, this is a completely empty project. There are no dependencies aside from what you get by creating a new Next.js app and adding ShadCN UI. There isn't even a components directory at the moment, but let's paste in this command. And you can see this is actually using the ShadCN CLI, but we're giving it our own URL, so it's accessing our component through our API instead of the ShadCN API. And we actually had to do a bit of reverse engineering on their API to be able to serve a compatible response. But let's press enter. And you can see it added not only the login page component that we generated using our v0 clone, but also the ShadCN UI components that it depends on, like input, button, card, and label. All of this is added into our components directory automatically. Now, to see if this really worked, I'm going to add this component into our main page.tsx, and then run npm run dev to start our dev server. Next, I'm going to go to localhost 3000 in my browser, and as you can see, the same UI component that we generated in our v0 clone is now part of our app. So how do we make this happen? Well, there are many parts to this. Of course, we have a front end using React and V. This communicates with our authentication provider, Clerk, to obtain a custom JSON web token that we can use to communicate with the rest of our API. We have a few APIs running on AWS Lambda that use SQS to communicate with each other and actually use the AWS IoT API to stream messages to the front end in real time using a WebSocket. And in our data layer, we have a PostgreSQL database on Neon, a vector database on Pinecone, and we're using OpenAI to serve as an LLM and also to generate embeddings that we can use to query our Pinecone database. The way this works in practice is that on the front end, we send a message using a POST request to our REST API. The REST API handler saves our message to the database and publishes a generation request to our SQS queue. And our queue forwards this to our subscriber API, which handles the generation request. The reason why we're doing this instead of responding to the message directly from our REST API is because this way, if your connection is interrupted or you refresh your page, we can still process your request. This is important because there are a couple steps required to generate your response, so we don't want to go back to step one just because of a minor connection issue. So we forward that request to our queue subscriber API using that queue, and then that runs our generation pipeline, which consists of a couple steps. First, a query refinement model is used to analyze your messages and determine if we want to respond with a chat message or if we want to generate a component. And during this time, it'll actually communicate back to the front end using our real-time API to say that it's thinking right now. If it decides that we want to generate a component, then it'll generate a detailed query for the component we want to generate. This improves the quality of our generated components and also makes our RAG pipeline more reliable by elaborating on what components are needed. For example, if you request a dashboard, a refined query might ask for a dashboard with charts, a button, and a sidebar, which increases the likelihood that those components would be returned by the vector database. Next, we convert the refined query into embeddings, and the front end will say that we're reading documentation, because at this point, we use those embeddings 
to query the vector database in Pinecone, which will then return the most relevant component documentation and examples from ShadCN. We send that refined query, along with the additional context we retrieved, to a component generation LLM. Now the front end will say generating component for a split second until the results start streaming in. Finally, we have our own output parser, which separates the code it's generating from the rest of the message. This is how we can show the chat messages on one side and your code with a live preview on the other side. It's also how we can serve your code through a separate API that lets you add the code to your project. Finally, all of this gets streamed back to the client using our real-time API and saved to our Postgres database so we can come back to it. This is a complex process, but the reason for that complexity is because the queue improves reliability, RAG improves the generation quality, and the real-time WebSocket API lets us do all of that without sacrificing speed or user experience. Finally, I'm going to quickly speak about the data preparation process that we use to set up both the RAG pipeline and those live previews in our UI. The reason I'm speaking about this is because ShadCN has an API. It's used by their command line tool, but at least as of when I'm making this video, it's not publicly documented. However, it is open source. So I'm going to show you how we can crack open their source code, reverse engineer their API, and use it to fetch their components and documentation for our RAG pipeline, set up the preview environment on our front end, and serve our own compatible API that lets us add components into other code bases using the ShadCN CLI. This ability to understand someone else's large production code base is critical for us as software engineers, and I'm excited that we can include that in this project. So this really is a comprehensive project covering everything from React to AWS services like Lambda and SQS to RAG using Pinecone and even reverse engineering APIs. That's our V0 clone project for the Head Starter Accelerator, and I hope you're excited to build it with me.